Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. We've got another air gun review that we're going to be doing here for you today. But I tell you what, before we get started, we've got some heroes and villains. I don't know what's going on with Iron Man, but he's just hanging out with the wrong crew. But I tell you what, they're getting a little bit close. I think I'm going to use this little Condor SS from Air Force Air Guns. Go ahead and take them out here. Let's have some fun. All right, Kylo Ren, I'm not too happy with you and your performance in the recent movie, so I think we just have to tell you bye-bye. Well, that pretty much dealt with him. Our stormtrooper over there got cold feet. He threw his mask off. I guess we're just going to have to roll down the line here. Oh, Iron Man, he's running with the wrong crew. I think I'm going to take him out too. <laughs> it's like the Wizard of Oz. Now, uh, you're probably hearing these loud explosions here, and you're thinking, there's no way this gun could be quiet. I'm going to shoot it in dirt for you here in a little bit, but uh, we got some more uh, evil bad guys to take out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, old Ultron's not a happy camper. We got one whopper of a charge on Darth Vader, so let me take out his Stormtrooper henchman. baby <laughs> it never gets old no matter how many times I do it all right uh oh okay all right let's take out old Darth Vader it's gonna be a whopper here whoa that was a whopper <laughs> yeah that never gets old no matter how many times I do it today we're gonna be talking about this Condor SS it's a really, really cool air rifle. It's integral suppressed, so it's very quiet. In fact, while I'm talking about it, while we're letting the smoke settle out there, I'm gonna pop it in the uh, dirt a couple of times so you can hear how quiet it is. You can set this up in about three different calibers. So you can run uh, 17, 22, and 25. Uh, the way that we have this one set up, it's in 25 caliber using uh, skirted Diablo pellets. Uh, it will shoot longer solids. They actually yield a little bit better accuracy with the solids than they do with the skirted pellets. But we were doing some grouping earlier and we got some pretty good results with some of the skirted pellets. Pretty good accuracy at 50 yards. Um, an air rifle like this is primarily set up for hunting, pest control, uh, silenced shooting out in the yard, things like that. If you live in a rural area where you want to be able to shoot in your backyard, if you got a, a reasonably safe backstop, you can do it. Now granted, we're making a lot of racket with this uh, binary here, but uh, that's probably the last of that we're going to do for the video. I'm going to shoot it down in the dirt here and let you hear how quiet it can be. All right, so on a typical charge with this thing, you're going to get, especially with these skirted pellets, you're going to get anywhere from around 25 to 35 shots, depending on how you got the gun set up. Uh, it can has adjustable power, so you can adjust the amount of output if you want it to be, you know, have that excellent amount of speed that you're looking for if you're not really concerned about how quiet it is. Uh, it operates at 3,000 PSI. It's the maximum operating pressure. So pretty cool little gun. I'm going to hit a piece of steel down there. All right. That was about 50 yards away. And I'll tell you what, let's lob one in at 100 yards. See what we can do here. Uh-oh, might have hit just under him. This thing's kind of got a bit of elliptical trajectory. All right, not bad. Little setup like this is nice. I'm running it off of a shooting stick, similar to what you would do in a hunting situation. A lot of times you're calling in critters, like say you're doing coyote hunting or fox hunting, or you're trying to hunt rabbits or whatever. Um, it, sometimes if you're hunting in tall grass, it's kind of nice to have a shooting stick to help support the gun. You notice that my firing hand is staying on the gun and I'm just uh, drawing the pellets out of my pocket here and using my left hand to load uh, the gun. So pretty cool. All right, let's take out our gopher there. Right in the head. So there's a headshot on a gopher. So if I had a little critter out in the yard hanging out and I wanted to get rid of him, I could do that. Uh, the optic that we have on this is an ATN 
Um, it's one of the Excite HD2s. It records uh, video. And one of the neat things about this particular optic and why I wanted it on this gun for this video is because this is a night vision and daytime optic that you can get for around six or seven hundred bucks. They're really not priced that bad at all. So it's a kind of entry level way, you know, to get into something like that. Let's take out our, our uh, coyote there. Huh. Well, missed him. Not bad. All right, I got some soda set up down there. We're gonna take a few shots and hit a few of these uh, just cans of soda, this little 25 caliber pellet, get them apart a little bit. Um, in terms of optics mounting, the way that this particular air gun is set up right now, I've got an 11 millimeter dovetail to Picatinny adapter, which uh, Air Gun Depot sells. Um, I got this particular gun through Air Gun Depot. They're a great bunch of guys to work with. Um, some of the best in the industry in terms of knowledge and just making sure that you get what you need. They're going to make sure you're taken care of there. But you've got an 11 millimeter dovetail all the way across the top of the gun. Uh, but I'm running Picatinny adapter for the X sight from ATN. And then up here, I've got a pick rail adapter with the quick release uh, Harris bipod that's mounted inside of a LaRue quick release Picatinny adapter. So that gives me a lot of flexibility in the field if I want to shoot from a bipod or whatever I want to do. See if we can pop a few sodas here. And we'll move on to some other cool things too. Get Chad behind it and he can shoot it some too. <laughs> you know, the, we were joking around earlier about this gun and one of the things that we were talking about is this is the uh, Texan's little brother in a lot of ways. You know, we did a review on the uh, Air Force Air Guns Texan and we were very happy with that. We got really, really good response off of that video. A lot of folks were happy with the fact that we were doing some air gun reviews. So we thought that we would uh, check out this 25 here. They offer a variety of different guns at Air Force Air Guns in terms of what you're looking for. You can actually get a package that's even more compact than this. And uh, I'm, I'm resting this on a shooting stick, uh, which is fine, but this is not a very heavy rig at all. Even with the X side on there, uh, it's easy to, to shoot offhand. You know, in fact, I'll, I'll get rid of the stick and uh, just shoot it offhand a couple of times. But they do a, a pretty dang good job. I mean, it's a nice handy rifle. I've actually killed quite a few critters with this exact uh, gun. I've killed a lot of animals with the Texan, mainly coyotes, foxes. In terms of game that you're going to be taking uh, with, a, with a rifle like this, you'd probably be looking at coyotes with headshots within probably 50 yards would be acceptable to get a humane kill right out the gate. You know, small groundhogs, things like that, squirrels, rabbits, small birds. That's really where something like this is going to excel. Especially in a 25, it'll just really put the smack down on a small animal. All right. Not too bad. A couple of more shots here. It is a single shot gun. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the breech and it cocks it. You put the round in the breech, push it flush, close the, uh, close the loading uh, gate, which can actually flip either way, depending on if you're a right-handed or left-handed shooter. All right, it locks in place. It's got a, like an M1 Garand style safety, just like the Texton. Push it forward, and it's ready to fire. It's got a kind of a light and spongy single stage trigger. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but overall not too bad. Oh yeah. So one of those things, you know, in the world of air rifles, certainly an interesting gun to play with. See if we can take out our gopher again there. Oh, just to the left. One more shot. And I'm going to let Chad have a go, let him shoot this thing a little bit. We'll come up with some other fun things to do. Maybe some spray paint cans and road flares and make some fireballs. You know, we like to have fun thing is definitely quiet. I know it's probably hard to tell on the video, but how quiet this thing is, is great. And from the standpoint of hunting and the fact that, yeah, I have hunted with this exact rifle a pretty good bit. What I like a lot about it is that, let's say you take a shot at a game animal and you miss him or whatever. Well, they don't really associate the sound with a gun. So a lot of times you can get sometimes a second and third chance, or let's say there's multiple animals you can take out multiple animals with this thing before they catch wind of what's going on 
and it's, it's really an effective hunting tool even above and beyond a normal suppressed rifle. I mean, I've, I've hunted small game with uh, suppressed 22 rifles and stuff, and even though it's quiet, they, they still associate it with a gunshot. It, it's strange, it's like they know the difference. But the report of this gun, even when they're unsuppressed, the report of, of a gun like this is it doesn't sound gun-like. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's just something you have to kind of get your hands on it, play around a bit. All right, one more shot. Let's take out our coyote there. Right over his neck. You can get as simple or as complicated as you want with optics on something like this. If you would just want to run like 11 millimeter rings and like a little air gun scope, something light and handy, you can do it. This one has the pick rail adapter on it, which is cool. You could even run like, if you wanted, like a little T2 micro or a small red dot sight, keep it nice and lightweight, easy to use. Definitely excels at that. All right, one more shot or a coyote. I'm gonna turn it over to Chad for a few minutes. Right in the head, all right. You know, I'd, I'd be really curious to see how this particular uh, gun would, would sound in terms of the suppression in it with like the 17 caliber setup. It just kind of comes down to what your preference is. I like the 25 because it really has the most power for this particular uh, rifle. I like the larger pill. I like using the, the solids instead of the skirted pellets. We actually ran out of solids from last week. We were doing some hunting and I shot up the rest of them. So I don't have them to show you, but we're shooting skirted pellets, which are great for plinking. So uh, very cool. That's a neat piece of hardware. I'm gonna let Chad have a little go. We're gonna reset the range with some other goodies. Have some fun. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a few shots with the Condor SS here. This is one really cool gun. Uh, we've had this and the Texan for about the same amount of time, been playing with both of them. And uh, we've taken them out predator hunting and such as that. And we found that, you know, the 25 is, is marginal on coyotes with the, the pellets. But if you use the heavier pills and get a good shot on them, you know, on the neck or the head at relatively close range, it really takes them down good. Does quite a number on foxes and other predators like that. But this thing right here, perfect, like Eric said, for crows or problem birds, one not on the farm or things like that. And two, being an air gun, this is not considered a firearm, just like we mentioned in the Texan video. And this being integrally suppressed is pretty interesting because this gun doesn't require any special paperwork or anything like that, like a firearm suppressor does. There's no Form 4, there's no $200 tax. Um, this cannot be integrated into a standard firearm. That's why these are completely legal to own. But um, I uh, actually was doing a little bit of chronograph work and some grouping earlier with this particular gun with the Diablo pellets. And uh, I was getting about 960 feet per second off of the tank. So just basically plugging the tank in and getting consistent shot to shot velocity there. And uh, just seeing what the gun is really capable of, like basically for a first shot kill, like a cold bore shot, like in a hunting situation. And uh, accuracy was very good, grouping under an inch at 50 yards. And uh, velocities were about 935, give or take. And then uh, on the first five shots off the tank, and then they dropped down to about 920. But accuracy retained its consistency, plus the impact point was very consistent for you know these small critters and such. But speaking of small critters, we got our gopher down there. And I cannot let him get away from me. If you notice, I'm wearing Eric's vest because he kept all the ammo, so very convenient here. All right, let's see. Let's take out Mr. Groundhog. Ah, right past his nose. Look at that. And he'll pop up again. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> that little pellet actually smacks with some pretty good authority. Tell you what, this thing is just uber fun. You know, not being a firearm too. In uh, say like you live in the city limits and you've got a you know an area in your backyard that you could theoretically shoot into, but you know you're not supposed to fire a gun in the city limits. You got the condor, baby. Shoot this thing all day long in the backyard, and nobody will be the wiser about it. All right, shoot that coyote in the head. <laughs> I love this thing. All right, so shot about 50 yards. We'll give it just a slight hold here. All 
I mean, it sends them right in. Probably the maximum range that I would consider using this for humane kills on pest animals, probably about 70 yards. You can maybe stretch it to 100, you know, with the heavier pills, but it just loses so much energy. And uh, you want to make sure that, you know, the pest animals you're uh, trying to control, you take them out rather humanely. Otherwise, uh, you know, PETA might get onto you. So, you know how that goes. All right, let's see. Ooh, man, that's a long way. I have to say, the site is actually pretty dang cool for the money. Let's see. I aim just over the top of his head. Ah! I haven't really shot this gun at 100 yards, but eh, just for the heck of it. Let me give it another try here. There we go. 39 grain pellet at 100 yards. All right, so let me take one more shot with this, just kind of down in the dirt. A little burn right over here. Oops. All right, so it's just down in the dirt, about 50 yards away. All right, so you can hear the kind of springiness of the, the rifle itself here. So you heard that. So I just happen to have a suppressed handgun in my pocket. So what I'm gonna do to compare, this is a shorter barrel of course, but I'm gonna hold the slide so it kind of has like a, you know, a single shot appeal here. So take a shot here at the same distance. So you can kind of hear the difference. You got a little bit of a, kind of a spoingy sound right at the shooter, but you can hear on the mic that the sound really isn't much different. Pretty interesting stuff. Couldn't help myself. All right, we're gonna try heating things up a little bit. We just got some simple spray paint cans with some road flares attached to them. I'm gonna try shooting them uh, in the nipple, shoot the nipple off maybe towards the top of the can, see if we can make some nice little choo-choo trains. Let's do it. I could probably shoot 100,000 of these and it would never get old. I know I say that all the time, but I promise. It is, it is as much fun as it looks. Well, I hit it. I wonder if it's uh, going to pierce the can. Surely it will. Maybe I grazed it. Let's try again. Yeah, I would say that works. All righty. Not bad. I'm just going to roll along here. Some pocket lint. That's no good. All right. Oh man, all right. <laughs> oh man, all right, a couple more here. Well, it looks like that one is giving us grief. Maybe it popped or something. All right. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I want it to kind of go up a bit like that. All right. Yes. Love it. I'm going to hit that one over there on the ground one more time. Make sure he is gone off. We don't want that thing popping on us and blowing up or anything. What? <laughs> Good thing I shot it again. <laughs> well, we're gonna go down here and play the fire dance, put out some fires here. But thank you so much for watching today's video. We always have all kinds of fun with our guns when we're doing these videos. And in this case, not a gun. Uh, whether it's an air rifle, a bow and arrow, you name it, it doesn't matter. If it launches something, we wanna use it. We, we like playing around with different guns and everything. Um, and the guys over at Air Gun Depot have been awesome. Really good guys to work with. I strongly recommend uh, if you have any needs, you know, definitely get with them because they're good people to work with. They're very knowledgeable. Going into this whole thing, I was a complete air gun noob. I still am to some degree, but we try to have fun with it and, and they've been 
really good at answering all my questions and making sure that I that I'm not a complete moron when I'm on camera. Well, even if I am, y'all aren't going to tell me. But anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. We'll catch you next time. We've got some really cool air gun videos on the way. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if you want more air gun footage, because if you do, we'll get some more air guns out for you. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.